Hello boys and girls and welcome to another video on my channel. Now in this video, uh, I'll be teaching you guys how to program and develop your own RuneScape private server. Now the main topics within this video that we are going to cover is general basic Java knowledge, uh, general usage of an IDE known as Eclipse. Uh, we're going to cover a few basic RSPF things like NPC spawns, shops, commands. Um, we might even touch upon up, upon interfaces, who knows, uh, button clicking, bosses, creating your own NPCs, etc. So we're going to quite, we're going to delve quite deep into this RSPS development generally uh, but yeah I started programming around six seven months ago and I when I started there wasn't much help around within the RSPS community I mean you had Rune 7 all but they weren't really helpful I mean they weren't there 24 7 there wasn't much tutorials well there was quite a few but you'd have to have some basic knowledge to understand and to follow the tutorials so I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to make my own series where I cover RSPS development and this series is going to be quite long. Uh, I am estimating around 30 minutes for the first episode and yeah so let's get right into it. So firstly uh, Rune Unity is a Ruse based RSPS private server. The link for the download of the source and the client oopsies. The source and the client will be in the description. So once you've downloaded it and you've downloaded this uh, IDE Eclipse um, so once you got both of them done and you got your files on your desktop, you want to go to file, create a new project, a Java project, and then you want to locate the the location of your file. And once you've hit it, you know, you just, you just you'll get both of these up here. So once that is done, uh, you want to get the you want to get the client running. And before we get the client running, we need to set the default IP address, uh, the, the IP address. Uh, we, we need to we need to host the client locally. So to do that, we go into src com.alania and then we're gonna look for a file known as configuration.java. Now in this file, you have a string, and in the string you have an IP address. Now this is the default local IP address, and you want to leave it as that. So it's one two seven zero zero one. So that's the default IP address and then you got the jag grab host and in the string you want to write localhost so and then you have the port we'll get into that later and then you have the client name so you can set this to whoever you want your server name so for now we're going to set this as test uh, we're going to set this as RSP Sobo and we're going we're gonna to set this as subscribe subscribe and like so we're going to set it as that and then we're going to leave the client version and the rest you don't really need to know these, these are just packet sizes etc we'll probably delve into that real later on because those can get quite confusing so once you've done that all uh let me just quickly relaunch it just to show you how it's done so once you've done that you want to go to client you want to hit run as then you go to java application and then you're going to see client.com.align so then you want to click ok and then it's decompiling and processing all your code and then you want to go to source and you'll do the same you'll see something called server and you just want to hit that it's really self-explanatory guys there's not much confusing about it so once you got it up and running uh, you're probably wondering how do you make yourself owner rank so i'm going to quickly dive into that you want to go to a folder which is called data and in this folder you have another folder called saves you want to go into that and then you'll have a folder called characters and then you'll see a json file with the account folder pre-created or already created and then you go into that file and you want to set your staff right as owner or developer i personally prefer developer as they have more more tools to help you program all right so with that once that being said uh you should be a developer rank and then you're good to go and now you're ready once you've done exploring the server you are ready to do some awesome programming so uh what should we get into first all right we're gonna get into npc spawns as you see i was messing around with a few previously um we're gonna get into npc spawns uh we're gonna go head over to a file which is located within the data folder and then you go to def or definition and then you'll see two files a text file which contains items of text so this file contains all every single item within the server so it's, it's, this is quite a large file and I highly recommend you do not toy around with this unless you know how to use it. So uh, we'll just I'll just show you a quick example of how to use this file. So we're going to go head over to Dragon Claw. OK, Dragon Claws. And as you see, the item ID is 14484. So if you were to spawn that item 14484, we should get a pair of Dragon Claws up here in our inventory. And then there's an example, the value. So the value means, uh, so as you can see, we have a general store hidden under the Cerberus, which I was messing around with. 
the value is 8 million you can set the value here guys if you want uh, i was messing around with it earlier so you can change that to whatever you want uh, that's the alking value so um how to explain this so if someone were to alk it or something along the lines of that and then you have stackable true uh you do not want it to be stackable uh, nor do you want it to be noted so we'll keep that as false double-handed yes uh equipment type weapon so what that means is if I were to set it as weapon, it would slot in this little placeholder right here. If I were to slot, like, if I were to create it as helmet, it would slot in the helmet. Of course, we don't want to do that, but that's just an example. And then we have is weapon. We leave that as true. The value is true. And then we have the bonuses. So let's say we want to change the bonus to 100, just for example, and we'll change this to 100. We'll change everything to 100 just to show you how it works. And this is just basically change the item stats and 100 requirement so the skill is zero uh i'm not sure why that's zero but whatever so we shall save that and if i were to do a command i think it works the same i added in this before reload a uh, reload uh, shops i think it was I'm not too sure I think it was that. Let's see. If it wasn't, we'll just restart the server and I'll show you. Alright, it was reload shop. So as you can see, our stats have changed. Uh, so that's pretty much how you change item stats. So we're going to cross that out. And let's get into um, NPCs. Now let's say we wanted to change... Let's say... Okay. So here we have NPC definition. Now this is the file which dis defines the NPC. Now let's say we wanted to spawn... Let's see, I'm looking for a Scotizo. 72. So the NPC ID for Scotizo is 7286. Now in this file we have the definition for combat, its size, uh, if it's aggressive, retreats, blah blah blah, respawn, and basically you, you, you can alter these. You can change to whatever you like. So here we have uh, we're gonna replace Cerberus with this. And I I forgot to warn you guys, make sure you're careful with JSON files as they are really tedious in my opinion. If you make the slightest type of error, it will just cause you a daunting error and you do not want that. So um, yeah, I highly recommend make sure you're careful with JSON files. So once you've done that, uh, you're going to relaunch the source. We don't need to relaunch the client. So you're going to relaunch that and uh, we should be able to replace the Cerberus with Scotizo. We can also set the coordinates. Uh, also, I forgot, we want that to be false, yes, and we want the radius to be zero. So coordinate, uh, meaning, do you want this NPC to move? No, so we'll say it false. Uh, the radius will keep to zero. So once that's done loading, it should tell you in the console that it is launched and yep, let's see if it worked. And there you have it, boys. You have Scotizo. Of course, you don't want that, but this is just an example, meaning that you can change your home to wherever you want it to be uh, now before you guys do download this seven client make sure you guys do give me uh make sure you do give me credits and the ruse re release of course because you know a lot of my hard work went into the space i have been working on this server for a couple of months before i released it and hosted it uh so yeah with that being said that's npc is pretty much done oops sorry about that uh some pc is pretty much done so we can cancel these two files as we don't need it now let's get into the shop so as you can see we have shop donation one or donation store one and let's say you want to change some of these items so as you can see we have a blue dreadful shield you know what i'm not too fan of custom so we're going to remove that we're going to look for the item id 18903 now to load up this small little coolant face you hit Control f on eclipse and it should load it so uh, this basically just searches for the the whatever you want on the specific file you're in and oops, one second give me a sec guys our our thingy just disappeared give me a sec boys i hate when this happens nope we're running like that okay cool that looks better all right so 18903 uh we're gonna we're gonna open up the console within the game and we're gonna search for uh, what item are we gonna search for let's search for Let's see what happens if you search Skadizo. Nothing comes up? Okay, find um, Elder Mall. Do we have an Elder Mall? Yes, we do. All right, so item 4450. Uh, so we're going to replace that. We're going to replace the blue dread shield with an Elder Mall. 1450. I think that was the right, correct item ID. Okay, never mind. It's 4450. So there you have it, boys. So uh, we just simply replaced it. And now for the changes to, be, to take effect, we do colon colon reload shops give it a second and 
Okay. Oh, wait, never mind. All right, so... Mm, okay, I made an error. Let's not use an Elder Mall. That is a bad example, as I completely forgot we had an Elder Mall there. Let's search for Magma Blowpipe. Magma Blowpipe. I'll find Magma. Okay. 1297. Item 12971. So this is a Magma Blowpipe. We're going to replace it for the Elder Mall. 1, 2... That was an ID again. It was 1297. 1297. So, as you can see, we just replaced the donation store, the Elder Mall, with a Magma Blowpipe. Magma blowpipe. So, if you were to do reload shops, a Magma Blowpipe should be in there. There you go, boys. So, here you have a Magma, magma Blowpipe. So, let it costs 100 donation points. Now, let's say. Uh, you don't want it to be 100 don donation points. You want it to be 10 donation points or or, four, or 60 donation points. Let's, yeah, 60 sounds like a reasonable price. Price. So we're gonna head over to our source, and we're gonna look for container input. And now within this package, we have a class file which is called shops.java. Now um, uh, this code is pretty advanced. I do not want to go into it as they take. A well way too long so uh, these are just pretty much final integer id so the item id uh, is a more accurate way of defining an, a number string so the item name a string meaning let's say you wanted uh, a string is basically a letter a word a, a, a f yeah a word it's basically a word then you have the item currency origin stock so it pulls up the stock of the item, which is 10 from the item.txt file. Uh, string name, yeah, b b boolean values. We will go into them later on, but let's just teach you how to do the shops. I'll probably go into that towards the end of the video. So if you're looking for the more advanced stuff, do scroll over to the end of the video. So we're going to search for, oops, uh, donation. Uh, we're going to search for the donation store. Give me a second. Okay, so here we have the donation store. As you can see, donation store one, which is nested within an else and an if statement. Uh, to explain those quickly, um, we'll just quickly give you an example of what they do. So, an if statement is really self-explanatory. So, if the condition, let's say the condition was if item is greater than zero. If item is greater than zero, it will execute whatever is in this code. So let's just say if the item is greater than zero, we want it to, uh, I don't know, send them a sender string, something like, uh, this is an example of it, hello world. This is a very poor example, but oh well. So an if statement works like this. So if the item is greater than zero, so if whatever's in, the, in here is true, then it will execute whatever is in the braces. If the it, if the if it is false, then it will not execute whatever is in this brace. So basically, to summary up, if it's true, it will execute whatever whatever is inside this. If it's false, it won't. Simple as. Uh, but if it is false, so let's say if it was false, you can call something like an else statement. So it'd be like if I need to redo that. If and then so if it's false, you could do else execute this. So if it is false, execute whatever is within these braces. That's pretty much an else and if statement. They can get really advanced. You can have nested if statements, uh, else statements. You can have while, do loops. Uh, there's so many, so many more uh, pre pre made uh, pre made methods. Uh, so back on track. Let's get onto the donation points. So let's say you wanted the uh, magma bow pipe to cost 60 donation points. So here we have a case. Oops. Okay, we're gonna just leave that at 60 again. So here we have the case. Now within this case, we're gonna input the item ID. So one two ninety seven. One two ninety seven. We're gonna add a semicolon which closes up the case. So the way the case works is the case. Uh, so for all of these item IDs, as you can see here, it will return the value of 60 donation points. So uh, all of these items are have a case value and they are ret they have a return value so they have a return value basically uh, it's kind of complicated to explain it i'm not sure i'm, I'm honestly kind of confused on how to explain it to you but basically we're gonna re we're gonna re uh re the source and i'll show you what i mean so 
The Bang Bang Blowpipe, if I'm correct, should cost 60 donation points. So we'll be back once the server has loaded. So yes boys, oops, uh, it's currently loaded and as you can see, a Magla Blowpipe currently costs 60 donation points. Uh, so that's pretty much how you do it guys. That's how you pretty much... Uh, you, the same method applies to every single store in this game. You can create your own stores. I'll probably go into that into another lesson. But yeah, we've so far we've covered NPCs, uh, spawning NPCs. We've covered uh, we've covered shops. Now let's get into something a tad more difficult, which is commands. Now here you have the command file. This can be found in the source SRC and it can be found in the packet import folder and then you head over to command packet interface now uh, this basically handles commands now if you do, if you aren't familiar with co commands are if you hear colon colon commands it's pretty much this is claim train all of these helpful commands that will just help you get by uh, so uh, these commands of course uh, certain players have certain access to commands so those are coded within cases it's basically a case was made for each rank and then you have a bunch of different variables i guess or, or predefined methods that were created and so an owner rank has access to all the player commands all the super donator extreme legendary uber member helper moderator administrator owner and developer command so that's pretty much it uh so yeah uh let's get into actually coding commands so let's say you want to create your own command uh we're gonna do that right now so let's say you want to create a command for example um barrels let's say you want to create a command to barrels which teleports you to uh, of course we have the interface for it uh where is it barrels mini game let's say you want to you want to do you want to you want the command to teleport you to barrels the mini game uh, okay, so we're gonna need data on you can access this by pressing the button just below your escape button and Hitting data on there. So here we have the codes. All right, so we're gonna keep that and let's say you want it Yeah, so let's just we're gonna use an if statement. I've touched upon this briefly before uh, so Just create this so if command uh, This is this is gonna get five once if command zero equals Oh, I hate this ignore case and we're gonna in the brackets we're gonna have a string barrows okay so if it if it if the command if the command okay so basically what this is saying is if the user enters the command within the string which is barrows so if the user enters the barrel uh, barrows then um, execute whatever happens whatever happens so execute the code within the braces so the code within the braces is going to be in fact oh yeah completely forgot we have it right here so we're going to change up these positions i'll explain what this entirely means three five six five all right three five six five and three three one three all right so i'm pretty sure okay i'm missing a bracket give me a sec okay so to explain this, if the user enters the command barrels, it's going to execute the code within the braces, which is the teleport handler, which teleports the which teleports the player to the coordinates which are entered within this bracket, and the teleport type is going to be a normal type. So it's going to it's, it's just the normal type. All right, so that's pretty much commands done. So obviously, once we launch the server, it should work. All right, so that's that done. All right, now we're gonna get into the more advanced stuff. So this was pretty much the basic touch upon. Of course, do experiment, guys. Solely do not reply me. I mean, you know, get yourself out there, right? Just, just try your hardest. Try learning new things every day. So here in the source, you know, you have a bunch of these square-looking things. These are known as packages. Now, packages, uh, the way they work is, you can have, uh, you can have a protected value, which, you, 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 well, okay, so you can have protected methods. Methods that only uh, execute within the package, so it'll only execute within this package if I were to create a method, uh, protected method. So we, we create our own method, which is bed. So uh, yeah, like I mean an actual bed, a bed that you sleep on. So I already went ahead and defined some of it. As you can see, uh, we create a package and we create a class. A class in Java is these small little files. They basically like 
blueprints in Java to create objects. Now, uh, we defined our object. We defined it. We defined it with a string, a name. So we're gonna. It has a name. We defined it with a size, an integer, which an integer in maths is literally numbers. So it holds a size. Uh, if you if you if you're gonna use maths with coding, and you're gonna make methods, make sure they are ints. Then you have a byte, which is a more accurate version of an int. I can't remember the exact value it holds, but it's just basically how long the bed will last. Then you have a double, which is a decimal value. So a double is basically, uh, let's just say, let's just give an example. So let's just say we wanted the weight to be, a weight equals 54.4. This is just a clear example. Of course, it's going to cause errors. Uh, but yeah, let's just say the weight equals that. As you can see, because uh, we defined it as double, so that means it should work. A float is also an accurate number. I can't remember the exact value it holds. It was a really large number. It was like 2 to the power 31 to minus 2 to the power 31. Something along those lines, I'm not too sure. Then we have a public boolean. So a boolean is basically true or false. So uh, I went ahead and decided to find the bed as true or false. So if the, if the bed was comfy, if the bed wasn't comfy so basically if the bed is comfy uh, we're gonna write comfy for example equals true meaning the bed is going to be comfy that's just an example and then you have a public static integer number of pillows so as you can see it's a static static is just basically if it makes sense you static well, there's no real, there's no real definition of static. I mean, you once you get a hang of Java, you'll soon come to realize why it's needed. So here you have a number of pillows, and of course, uh, that's pretty much the methods. You know, of course, there's so much more. There's, I mean, there's loads more that comes to Java. Like I'm talking about methods, predefined methods, etc. Uh, then you have primitive operators. Now, what primitive operators are? So let's say if you to do integer some. Okay, so uh, you know what? We're, we're going to do this outside of the bed class because obviously we do not want to cause errors. So we're going to create a new class. Uh, we're going to do... Oh, okay. This is a project. Oops, my bad. So we're going to create a new uh, class and we're going to name this uh, uh, size. Yeah, we're going to name it size. Size.java. We should have made it capital, but oh well. So in the size, we're going to import import so, uh, okay we will do the import layer so we're gonna do integer size 1 equals 50 plus 10 uh, integer size 2 equals some a uh, size 1 plus 66 we're gonna do integer size 3 equals to size 2 plus plus size Okay, wait, my bad. We're going to do size 1 and size 2. So, what this f basically means. So, uh, size 1 is equal to 60. 50 plus 10 is equivalent to 60. Size 2 is equal to 60 plus 66. Size 3 is equal to size 1 plus size 2. So, we're just, we're just using primitive operators. The same applies to subtraction. So, if we were to copy all of this and add in oh wait we need to we need to give them new names because we've already called upon them uh we'll name it to mine we could do minus uh you can do division subtraction modulus there's so many primitive operators within java uh but yeah that's pretty much adding abstracting and maths i mean there's of course there's a lot more maths you have math seal maths random uh, you have so many more there's so many mo more maths operators in java another thing i wanted to carry uh would, would show you was um increments and decrements so what they are is basically let's say if you to give let's say you to assign a value equals to five let's say you to give a value of five and let's just say okay okay let's say we had two values okay wait my bad all right well we're, we're, we're kind of grasping the straws here so let's say you have integer number one and you had integer num2 which equals to 10 if we did num2 plus equals num1 and we just added in a 
plus equal. Okay, wait, that's causing an error. Give me a second, guys. All right, so if we had num2, num1, let me just think. Give me. A uh, now this is gonna cause errors, of course. Um, so basically, what this is. So let's say if you have integer num1 uh, or integer num2. So basically, num1 will be six. This will be nine. I'm not sure why I'm going into this. In fact, it's not even relevant to be honest. We're learning about freaking RSPS. All right, this is so pointless. Uh, well, just the last part at least. Uh, the actual part about beds and all of this. This actually, you do you do need to learn more about this. Um, so make sure you guys get into that. And let's see what else we can get into. Um, so here I have all the code for the Zora. Uh, this is it's it's not fully done. I mean, I was working on it, but I still fully fully haven't completed it. Then you have all the combat, uh, the combat scripts for all these bosses. Uh, you can create your own combat scripts. Uh, they do tend to get quite advanced, as you can see. Next course does get quite advanced. Uh, so make sure you guys, obviously, do try to get better. I mean, one day you might be able to be uh, able to code your own combat scripts. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the end of episode one, guys. I'm not sure what I what to say. I mean, I did say it was gonna get very basic. Uh, this is the first episode, guys. So if you guys are finding this too easy then of course it gets a little harder i mean we stop we will hope to soon get into interfaces client work packet sizes uh, etc so yeah hope you guys did enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like and uh, if you do download this base source and client that i released on rune server make sure to rep me guys and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out boys